Howdy, howdy. Good day, Probers. And welcome to... But it was alien. The extra... Asshole. <laughs> the... The asshole. <laughs> the extraterrestrial paranormal comedy podcast, where we probe paranormal events to determine for the questionable benefit of humanity whether those events really were paranormal. <laughs> My name is Mr. Kevin, and alongside me with no idea what's coming up is Mr. Granville Moonwalker. I walk on moons. Today, we head to the most honourable of locations. John's house. The most trustworthy of locations. John's second house. Let me ask you, Mr. Moonwalker, if you had information you needed to share, but you were fearful of the repercussions... If you had access to top secret information and needed to get this information out before you got whacked. Whacked. If you needed somewhere safe to unload after listening to people fart in the gym all day, where would you go? Where? The internet. The safest space of spaces. It's also the most dangerous of spaces. We begin our tale today on the darkest corner of the internet. Kev's brain. Reddit. Reddit! Kev's Reddit. (laughs) Kev's subreddit. Reddit is a place people go to share their truth without repercussions. Four years ago, a now deleted Reddit user named Inuk Shaken Inuk Shaken posted I can't tell you who I am, and I can't tell you the name of the program, but what I can tell you is that if what they say is true, we're in trouble. Now, we didn't make contact in the way you would think we would. We didn't beam out an episode of The Office towards Andromeda and hear back from alien critics, and we definitely didn't meet them face to face. We found another way to communicate. Something apparently ancient humans have figured out as well. The user goes on to state that we, as in NASA, have been working on this technology for a while. I mean, I'm not surprised by that. Mm -hmm. NASA and the military like to work on things a good... 20, 30 years before we even hear of them. So. Possibly longer because technology went crazy for a while, like from the 50s, 60s yeah, to the there was a boom, 90s, 2000s. The amount of new shit that we got. And then we ain't getting new shit anymore, we're just getting smaller shit. But even the smaller shit ain't getting that small. No. Sometimes it's getting bigger. We're getting bigger shit to replace the smaller shit. And we hear all about these crazy drones with stupid speed Shit. capabilities and whatnot, but we ain't seeing that on the market be quite dangerous like a missile in the wrong hands this is a weapon in the right hands it could save the world as a weapon so it's a weapon then it's a paper plane <laughs> <laughs> they can be weapons yes they can our NASA source disclosed that sound plays a much bigger part in the universe than known. By this, they mean that the universe is actually a load of vibrations and noises. If you can manipulate those vibrations, you could achieve the impossible. The Reddit user disclosed that the previous day, NASA did exactly that. Now... I actually think if some people in a lab did make an absolutely crazy breakthrough, there is a chance that some honourable member of the group may, with their mind blown, try to get the word out. Our source shared that NASA played particular frequencies into an echo chamber at a particular volume, and that, eventually, NASA broke through some kind of barrier. The glass observation panel into the chamber begun shaking as if heavy bass was playing, so they turned the speakers off. The booming didn't stop. The workers begun feeling this booming deep within their chests, within their very person. Slap at the bass! 
those in the room fell silent as they realised that they could almost understand this booming in their chests. It wasn't a voice, but they could just tell what was being communicated. Yes, something was communicating. Our source has tried to put into words what was said despite no words being used. It started, and this is absolutely legitimate, the communication started as follows. Whoa! You guys are back? Okay, that's just odd. (laughs) But... Is it? Imagine that what they're hearing is Bill and Ted. The real life Bill and Ted. Like they were real... The movies were based on <laughs> <laughs> two people that were sent around the world or whatever, around the universe. Mm-hmm. Bill and Ted is in, I can't even remember the film's plot, to be honest. But yeah, real life Bill and Ted. You can't, also, The plot is they've got to do a presentation or something at school and it's on history. So they go back in time to find all the historical figures to be part of it, basically. I might watch that soon. It's a classic. Um, Also, if like noise can be heard in space, like vibrations and noises, then the saying in space no one can hear you scream is false. Run that by me again. The saying in space. The first part, sorry. If vibrations and noise can be heard in space. But they're not in space. Well, they are in space, but they're on a planet. Aren't they being played through space? Space and time. We're in space and time right now, and I can hear you. (laughs) Asshole. (laughs) The scientists next initiated contact, perhaps unintentionally, but they did. One of the group of scientists, caught up in the feeling instinctively said hello after a few minutes the booming returned and seemed to say i think we've said it right now say that again our source in shaken this time repeated back hello we have contact folks we have contact how do you think they replied i am a level four scientist at NASA, who am I speaking to? Uh, is this a scientist or the people they've made contact with? Who am I t- replying for? Well, that's what I'm asking. <laughs> well, that's the scientist. And the alien's like, Wow, you sound like me. I'm a level two communication expert from space NASA. I've got antennas. Don't shout too loud. You might give me an orgasm. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Imagine that creature every time there's a loud noise has an Ah, orgasm. ah. Waiting for a bus. The bus pulls up. (laughs) Stood there at the bus's door. (laughs) The bus driver's like, you're getting on? (laughs) What moment? (laughs) It's just a wet patch. Go clean yourself <laughs> Someone rings the doorbell. <laughs> <laughs> the boom communicated that. Yep, there it is. You guys figured it out again. That's crazy. This was not how NASA expected the first communication in modern history with otherworldly entities was going to go. NASA inquired... Who is this? What is this? The NASA SWATs were advised that they couldn't be told who it was, but they were advised that they were now using the highest form of communication in the universe. NASA were also advised that our ancestors had figured this out. This meant that whatever NASA were communicating with were likely in our time and experiencing time just as we do to be able to refer to our ancestors. NASA asked the boom where they were from 
and were told that our ancestors were not told as they wouldn't get it. After taking a minute break to do some quick maths, the boom returned to tell NASA that the observable universe they see is not the whole universe. The boom said to multiply that by 15 and that's where the boom originated and that there is a lot more universe behind that. NASA called bullshit. <laughs> Imagine they're literally just communicating with some um, teens in a dorm room. That's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so teenagers like in a uni. They're like, shh, stoned. Shh, shh, shh. <laughs> They've come through again. We've got them. What are we saying guys, this time? Guys. <laughs> it's, uh... right, what can we say? And then they're being punked. <laughs> How big's the universe? How big's the universe? Shit, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. Uh, times up by 15. Yeah! <laughs> the boom responded to NASA calling bullshit by asking NASA why they still use light as a measuring stick. NASA, you see, had queried the length of time it would take in light years to communicate beyond such extreme distances. The boom then said... You're still not advanced enough. You don't even know. NASA asked what they didn't know, and the boom said, You're dead center. In the life abyss, there is no life on any planet around you. But more than ten of your observable universes around you in any direction. It's a universal mystery how you're even alive, man. And there is a reason for that. This is where the post ends. The post was titled, I work at NASA. We made alien contact yesterday. They probably whacked the leak at this point. Will we ever know the reason? Give a NASA a bad name. Can you imagine that, right, let's just say for argument's sake, mm -hmm. this is completely real and it happened and we are dead centre in the life abyss. Yeah. What if all the UFOs that have been reported here are literally just coming to see how the fuck we're still alive? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> They're just like, it's like a science trip for them. Like, and today, class, we're going dead centre in the life abyss. Yay! <laughs> and then they come and see how the fuck, and they're like, what the fuck is we that? We know that no one should be here, class. But these little twits. <laughs> what do you think they mean by life abyss? Probably the Big Bang was not an explosion of life as we know it, but an explosion that disintegrated life as they know it. And ah. somehow we have survived it. Interesting theory. So it's a giant abyss where there shouldn't be anything that is alive, but somehow we are. So they're from beyond the bang. Mm -hmm. As you can imagine, this post changed the world of Reddit. The comments went crazy. Comments were profound and included the following. Too fucking dope. Keep this up. Whoa. Word monkey, make more words faster. Why would an alien use the word yardstick? The reason? Why is there no life around us? And I call cliffhangers brain blue ballers. But all <laughs> remained silent. Inuk Shaken is now deleted, remember? But it wasn't this post that had Inuk Shaken whacked because Inuk Shaken would post again. This second post was called I work at NASA. We made alien contact last week. A week had passed. Post 2 begins. An earnest and tangible feeling of dread took over the control room. There is a reason for that. It reverberated through my entire body as the vibration spoke. After a minute of silence, the senior scientist, Dave, asked what that reason was. The booming response soon came. If you value your lives, 
If you value the lives of every living thing on your planet, never use this form of communication ever again. These voices are killing me. <laughs> Why did I pick croaks? So, so this could be a warning that a higher power on their side would see that there is life here, and they'd be like, exterminate it now. There shouldn't be anything. Yeah. Or they're gonna send like a bunch of aliens or essentially farmer scientists to come and just take everything and we would then just be science studies mm. so you think it's these people communicating that are a threat yes but not them their, their superiors their uh, military okay. the same way our scientists work under the military but still kind of want to do their own little backdoor mm. like experiments and shit without telling them what they found yeah i think it's the same and they're like don't ever use this again because if you use this and one of our superiors happens to be in the room mm -hmm. they're gonna be like what the fuck and all the scientists will get murked and then they'll send military ships to murk our planet uh. double murked after this warning the boom from another world faded away. At that point, Inuk Shaken explained that this experiment was being overseen by the US military and the military directed over the intercom that nothing be touched whilst they come into the lab to check things out. The scientists were taken into private rooms and questioned by their boss where they realised that those supervising had just watched the scientists standing around in a circle whilst occasionally yelling nonsense at nothing. The supervisors hadn't felt the booming presence and must have thought those they were watching, the scientists in the lab, were crazy. All the scientists gave an honest account, the same account, independently. What started as a ridiculous story suddenly became more believable with each additional identical account. The scientists were then interviewed by the military and gave the same accounts again. As Inuk Shaken was being interviewed, someone interrupted. Sir, we need you down the hall immediately. Left alone in the room, Inuk Shaken couldn't help it they checked the interviewer's notes, which had been left behind. The notes had a title, Unknown Frequency Report. This report outlined that Inuk Shaken had undergone significant physical changes in the past six months since observations had begun after exposure to the frequency. Six months of observations. The scientists had had no idea the notes ended by theorising as to whether the frequencies result in mental illness, breaks with reality, or in hallucinations. The scientists were being scienced. They were. <laughs> <laughs> they were guinea pigs. Ooh, sneaky. Science. Sneaky. Yeah, they thought they were testing. They were, in fact, being the subjects. Tested. Yeah. So, what we have here is a possible military weapon to use sound frequency and sound waves to fuck over the world. Mm -hmm. Not fuck over, but do something. Control, yeah. maybe. So, imagine... I'd say imagine you're deaf. You have a hearing aid. Or, I suppose if you have a hearing aid, you could be easier to manipulate, considering they could set it to the frequency of your hearing aid if they knew what they were all set to. <laughs> but if you didn't use one, you could be like, I am legend, where everyone else is a crazy vampire thing and you're just like Will Smith with a gun and a dog. Would you live in a world like that? Like, would you be Will Smith with Mox? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Put Mox in there, I'm signing up for anything. Would you live in a post-apocalyptic nuclear wasteland? No, with Mox? Yeah! <laughs> be fine he's sleeping on the sofa right now he's a good boy 
you'll probably hear me do that voice and go nutty now. After finishing the notes, Inuk Shaken realised that they hadn't turned the vibration machine off. A single press of one button would result in the vibrations beginning again. Arlik ran out the door and back down the hall to the control room where the military officers and scientists were again stood in a circle. Inuk Shaken was too late. The voice, well, boom, was back. I just told you to never use this again. The boom was pissed. Some of the older military men grabbed at their chests in pain. The boom went on. You could have got it away with just using it for once. Twice was too much. He heard you. He's listening right now. And he's coming. Do you not fucking space Sauron? <laughs> <laughs> The all-seeing eye, <laughs> or the all-hearing ear. <laughs> it's just this ear in space. So what the hell is going on here? Are the scientists being scienced, or is it real? you got to make up your mind, Redditor. You go with one story. Well, maybe the scientists were being scienced and it's real. So maybe the military scientist-scientists, upper scientists had a theory but they thought it could cause harm so they um, pointed some lower scientists in the right direction and then observed and waited to see what happened okay well thought out but we have the all hearing Sauron now (laughs) he's twigged his ear to the frequency he's heard yeah they didn't predict this gonna have little uh, spaceships dropping little ears out of the sky soon Taking everyone away. It is you on hear the that? string. <laughs> That's actually where Inuk Shaken's post ended. The case went cold. For a while. People wondered whether he came for Inuk Shaken specifically. Sure enough, though, it wouldn't be long before Inuk Shaken would rise again with another post. They hadn't got to them yet. Or had they? The post was called I work at NASA. We have never made alien contact. (laughs) The post begun This is an apology. Over the last week, I have posted two hysterical stories about making contact alien contact with a far off intelligent species. These stories, while being a fun writing exercise, have not been appropriate for someone in my position. Working with the government, they were complete fabrications on my behalf, born from a bored mind after watching an episode of Ancient Aliens. Yes, this post was a lengthy denial of all that had been posted before. The post went on to call BS on all the frequencies and the existence of a device able to open this doorway through sound waves and vibrations. The source stated that their bosses found out about the Reddit post and Inuk Shaken got a stern talking to where they were told to come clean. Inuk Shaken disclosed that the name was Brian King and they were a 34 year old white male living in Washington with their wife and three children. Brian denied ever having had any physical exams or abnormalities, but there was a code hidden in this post. Throughout the post, there were random capital letters, followed by a numeric code at the end of the post. What are you thinking? Brian King's a bit of a generic name, isn't it? Yeah, cover-up name, you Um, may say. Also... Yes. He's been told to come clean and remove the thing from Reddit. Yeah. And issue an apology. If his superiors found the Reddit post. Yeah. What does he think putting the code and the like the the capital letters and a numeric code at the end are gonna do? Maybe. Do they, he does he think, think they're gonna read it enough. and go, Oh, he's clearly done what we've told him to do? Oh, what's this numeric code at the bottom and these random capital letters? Oh, that's nothing. 
but maybe that's to buy time. It's going to take them time to work it out. But whilst they're working it out, the internet is also working it out. By the time they do, he's Who's done quicker? whatever he needed to do. Who's quicker? Oh, the internet. 100%. Million percent. But it probably goes nowhere. Simple impulse. Hundreds of thousands, potentially millions upon millions of people all working it out at once versus a team of, what, 10 military scientists? You say that. You can't beat the internet. It's um, invincible. How many of these scientists do you think are smart? <laughs> well, I, I would have thought all of them, but what you're about to hit me with literally just go into the reddit chat as someone and help to try and decode it and get the code and go in are they smart or are they street smart <laughs> probably the former <laughs> <laughs> why sit there and try and work it out you can have one team of scientists working it out and one just sitting in the reddit with the internet maybe maybe they're super smart and they know the internet's one weakness so in the comments they post porn. <laughs> Completely derails the investigation. <laughs> Every time there's something interesting happening in a post, just stick some porn in there yeah. and everything just goes... The government shit. actually created porn. <laughs> Through the beauty of Reddit, commenters had already solved the code for us by applying a numeric value to each capital letter in order and then rearranging them in the order of the code. It reads, They are making me write this. I will post more codes on other stories, different accounts. Clever girl. NASA thought they had Brian, but Brian had plans. NASA aren't silly though. They knew what Brian was up to by this point, so at this point, after seeing this post, Brian must have been effed royally. At the time these posts were being released, single non-repeating fast radio bursts were being detected. An article on astronomy.com by Corey Haynes on June the 27th, 2019 confirmed that Australian astronomers had traced one such burst back to the galaxy of origin for the first time. What if something was now trying to communicate with us or monitor us? Sauron. Sauron the year. <laughs> I just keep picturing you like the sour and eye, but it's just an ear instead, and somehow that looks so much sillier. Just twitching. <laughs> hmm. Every now and then, a little hand comes out and cups the ear. <laughs> it's coming for us, but what if? Because space is so big, it's actually going to take like billions upon billions of years, and we're actually be gone by the time it gets here. It's like, where'd they go? Yeah. I was coming to get him. I'm hungry. Oh no, they're gone. Gets back home, gets really annoyed with the scientists. Like Galactus. Do you. So, in the earlier parts, it mentioned how our ancestors communicated with them. And yes. They spoke about it. Yeah. Do you reckon they live longer than us? And it's the same group of scientists that spoke to our <laughs> previous ancestors. Maybe they're all going to the same point. This frequency gets to that space and that time specifically. Yeah. And so all throughout time, we've been communicating with the same group of teenagers. <laughs> <laughs> the last 500 years, but for them, it's just been a week. <laughs> or it communicates with the same place at the same time but it's the group of teenagers in the frat room at the university. So our ancient ancestors, like in Egypt, were communicating with teenagers from university in the 2000s. <laughs> and they were like, what, what would be a really good idea? Egyptians, you should build pyramids. <laughs> <laughs> that is ancient Britons. Pyramids were born. You should put stones on top of each other. Get them from ages away. Yeah, that sounds like a really good idea. You're being told by this, higher beings. <laughs> this group of teenagers is responsible for every major ancient landmark. And they're just high. <laughs> Inuk Shaken, Brian, 
would return for one more post. This post was called, I work at NASA. Fuck it. We did make alien contact. <laughs> Brian went rogue. The post begins. Forget the codes. Good job on figuring one of them out. But forget them. This is bigger than my job at this point. This is about the world. World. This is about you, the person reading this, and what you can expect moving forward in the next few weeks. Brian shares that by this point he had fled the country and was hiding his location of posting. Brian Inuk Shaken goes on to explain that the vibration chamber was real. The frequencies were real. Brian picks back up where he previously left off with a military and scientist feeling the boom. The boom continued. Here comes the boom. Here comes the boom. If you just stumbled upon this technology, the chances of you having the technology to repel it is pretty much zero. Even we only have that half figured out. Suddenly, a voice yelled, Cut this shit out immediately! A man in a suit had turned up and was ready to mib some folks off. The suit demanded to know what this technology was and said that if the boom made us figure it out ourselves, and we would, we would not be happy. The suit immediately collapsed. So run! Now whack them! Now whack them! Tried to act like a big boy, effed around and found out. Sauron's ear got him. Sauron's ear had had enough of his shit. He'd heard enough. <laughs> I'm not going to sit around here and listen to you badmouth me. I'm Sauron's ear. Take this. Flick some earwax at him. <laughs> Was that what Sauron sounded like in the films? <laughs> <laughs> Don't think he had a voice. I am here! He grunted, didn't he, in the end? <sighs> nah. Nah. The boom explained that the vibrations are dangerous in many ways and that humans were not advanced enough to protect themselves. The boom explained that there was no point in shutting it off now because he knows where we are now. It was too late. Brian jumped in and asked who he was and the boom explained that he doesn't have a name. It went on. There are four of them that we know about, and it's just your luck. The meanest one of all is coming for you. Left ear. <laughs> the boom gave the example of humans coming from a sperm and an egg and growing far beyond those ingredients, many times the strength and what we started as. The boom asked the scientists to imagine that process again, only something growing far beyond the dimensions, beyond the power we can imagine. Something that could survive in the void of space. Something unstoppable. The boom finished by stating, We are eons ahead of you in every field you can think of, but we can't stop them. We are so far away from you. It is impossible to describe. We cannot protect you. We will try and help. The collective will do its best. But really, you're alone, man. This was Inuk Shaken's last post. Are the four, let's call them horsemen of the apocalypse, are the four coming? Yep. It's inevitable. The four ears of the apocalypse. <laughs> so we're fucked then. Essentially, that is what we're being told, yes. That something's coming. We've overstepped our mark. Overstepped our mark ages ago, but... We got cocky, <laughs> trying to get ahead of ourselves, when we ain't ready. We're fucked. So yeah, something's coming to the, uh, what is it? The middle of the abyss? Centre of abyss? Whatever it is. The life abyss. That's it. Something's coming... To fuck us up or maybe something is coming to fuck us up but it's around there that's why there is a life abyss because it ruins everything as soon as it hears something it travels towards them and f's them Ooh. and the life abyss is all around wherever this thing in space this galactus is so it's like thanos 
Yeah, kind of. Thanos has heard us. Only Thanos was looking for something for a long time, and then he kind of wiped out half the universe. Maybe what he was looking for is on Earth. Now that he knows it's not destroyed, he's heard us. Maybe he's coming. he was looking for a way to get back on the frequencies. He's going to ride him. Ride the wave. So he can go for the collective. We're fucked. <laughs> This post appears to have originally been submitted to Reddit subfred Humanity Fuck Yeah, Fuck the yeah. creative writing thread. But the original poster stated that their original post to subreddit No Sleep, where people post their personal experiences, was removed. The post subsequently got accepted on No Sleep. The source, Inuk Shaken, is that Inuk or in UK shaken. Is their hidden location compromised? <laughs> Regardless, their account has been completely deleted. Completely whacked. Another user, network underscore noob 534, posted to corroborate this account, stating that they too worked at NASA and that this was completely true. That's all we have in the way of evidence. Sadly, In UK Shaken did go on to later post one more story before disappearing in late November 2019. That post was titled, I was in prison for 15 years. There was a skinwalker in there with us. Brian has a style. (laughs) <laughs> if Brian was 34 in 2019 and had been in prison 15 years, that means that Brian probably worked at NASA before prison, before he even left school in his late teens. As such, it turns out that rather than a whistleblower, this dude is probably the M. Night Shyamalan of Reddit. <laughs> As we prepare to conclude... It's hard to find supporting evidence for this one, and not so hard to discredit. Though discrediting is exactly what the government would try to do, isn't it? They can't delete the post because it's out there, so it's the only weapon left in the arsenal. Touché. Maybe they logged into In UK Shaken's account, posted the other one to make it look less... Wanky. Yeah, they, they've they made it more like he was just creative writing. And then boom, it's delete the way. account after. No one's going to believe it. That sounds exactly like something a government official may do. Exactly what they would do. How else but could you deal with better. it? How else? It's either that or take the whole site down so no one can see it. So I think that's probably the... That's worse. Yeah. You're definitely going to... People are going to get more suspicious if you do that. Yep. In summary, we've covered Reddit user in UK Shaken's 2019 disclosure that NASA made contact with aliens whilst experimenting with different frequencies in an echo chamber. Eventually, NASA broke through some kind of barrier to another world or dimension. A dude like Alien suddenly began communicating with NASA. Alien Dude told NASA that there is a life abyss around Earth, but didn't explain this further. Alien Dude went on to warn NASA not to use the communication system again. The US military were supervising this experiment and begun questioning the scientists as to the military observing. It just looked like a bunch of scientists in a circle hallucinating. The military started the echo chamber back up and reinitiated communication. This resulted in a warning that something now knew where we were and would come for us. The Reddit post then tried to cover up what they had originally disclosed, but hid a code in this post explaining that everything was actually real after all. In the last Reddit post, the alien identified themselves as the collective and explained that they tried to help us, but that really, we are on our own, awaiting our potentially deadly encounter with the meanest member of the four. This post was made on Reddit, and there's little to back this one up, but the account holder, in UK Shaken, has posted another short story. Meanwhile, someone with the same handle has posted other short stories on other websites. 
Is this a discredit movement? Or is this bullshit? Are you ready to conclude yet, Mr. Moonwalker? Do we have any information about this from the military? No, nothing at all. Nothing at all. And as I said at the start, I think if something like this were to happen, this is probably actually the most likely way that it would come out. Right. I'm ready to conclude. Are you saying that it was aliens? I'm saying that the way in UK Shaken has come out afterwards and said that it's all bullshit or Mm -hmm. whatnot is exactly how the government would try to discredit them and discredit the information getting out and they would pour cold water on it and say it's all bullshit Mm -hmm. I'm siding with the government it's bullshit (laughs) (laughs) Uh, when I first came across this case I thought there was a lot more out there on it It turns out it's not actually being covered that much. That's probably because it's just a Reddit story. Unless it isn't. But it probably is, and I'm not saying that it's aliens today, though I stand by my statement that anonymous disclosure could come one day in this very format. Probably has in some. Yeah, it already could have. Just not this one. (laughs) Any final thoughts today, Mr. Moonwalker? No. Not aliens, but a fun ride. That is a wrap for today. Thank you for listening to But It Was Aliens. If you are interested in hearing more from us, then by golly you can. By golly gosh. Head on over to patreon.com forward slash but it was aliens and for the cost of a diddly coffee, you can gain access to our side probes. Bonus episodes where each month we investigate the more outrageous of paranormal mysteries, conspiracies and otherworldly events. You gain access to these episodes if you pay the cost of a diddly coffee. Tiddly, diddly, diddly, widdly coffee. This is a bargain basement stuff and once you're in there, no holds are barred. Anything goes. Even ball grabs. You can share episode suggestions with us on the I love Twitter on the X Twitter at But It Was Aliens. You could also say hello on Facebook, where connected to But It Was Aliens is a secretly public private group called X. <laughs> that one's getting more erratic every time. <laughs> Being a member of <laughs> grants you protection from the aliens when they invade. Ignore the chalk outlines. A class of children were doing some crayon drawings. That is it for this episode. (laughs) Shh. They haven't been found. That means they're still alive. (laughs) That is it for this episode. So until next time. When someone tells you that they're giving back to charity, does that mean that they took it from charity first? The truth is up there. Hash tag proud.